Hey, Paul, it's Sir Jimmy here. What's coming up on today's show? Hey, we've got Bill Beeks from Meeks Mix Media, our animator, the guy who did our theme uh, intro. We're going to talk about some tablets and book reading devices. And if Kevin the King Lawler set up the lights right behind me, let's go on now. Book Guys Show is brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash bookguys and get a free book just for trying them out for one month. This is the Book Guys Show, the show where we talk about every week. We talk about books, audiobooks, audio dramas, and podcasts. My name is Paul Alves, sometimes known as Paul the Book Guy. Hey, this is Sir Jimmy down here in North Carolina. Go Syracuse Orange Men. Yeah, you're all done up there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I had good. to break out and knock the dust off this. It's been like since 2003 since uh, these things were fashionable. But, you know, 26-year fan. I, I like the cowboy hat you were wearing uh, in the pre-show. That was kind of cool. Oh, well, that's always, that's always close. That's, already, that's my lawn mowing uh, fishing hat, you know. I, I try to... You know, I'll, maybe I can combine these and... America. <laughs> hey. America, baby. <laughs> hey, speaking of America, oh, well, that's off topic. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> hey, speaking of off topic, our guest today from Meeks Mix Media, the man who made the great intro that we play each and every week, Bill Meeks. How you doing, buddy? Very off topic. I'm feeling very off topic tonight. So I, th- <laughs> I, th- I think it'll be a fun show. I Now, uh... I, I, am I correct in assuming that I, I'm the only guest who made it? You are. You're, in fact, Sir Jimmy's the only host who made it. Uh, you're the only guest who made it. And so mm-hmm. the Padres away. There's <laughs> liquor in the Red Solo Cup, baby. Excellent. Here is my friend. Nostrovia, as the Russians would say. <laughs> We're going to do something a little different this week. We're going to start the show right off, if the jingle box that we set up here works. Uh, We're going to start off every week now by going through the... It looks like Amazon has announced it's acquiring the the book recommendation social network site Goodreads. You know, I, I hadn't heard about Goodreads uh, until Tom and Veronica were on here, but uh, apparently it's huge. Uh, the popular website has over 16 million users, um, 30,000 book clubs, and it's already hosted uh, many features that are linked to Amazon's bookstore. So. Why not just buy it up? Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. (laughs) Sounds like a good idea to me. Hey, actor Jim Carrey is publishing a children's book. The actor says, I'm going to self-publish because that's just the world right now. And I think it's cool. He also promised that the book will be beautifully illustrated, telling the story of a little wave named Roland. And according to Yahoo, the book will be published this September. And he's going to come for your guns. Yes, he is. Yes. With his cold, dead hands. Um... It looks like France is going to try to bail out independent bookshops, says uh, French culture minister Ariel Philippetti has unveiled part of the government's plan to shore up independent booksellers, uh, despite earlier fears that she would be unable to commit any money because of France's huge budget deficit. She announced a fund of 5 million euros uh, would be created for loans to booksellers with uh, cash flow problems and that the budget of the ADELC, the association that subsides booksellers, uh, would rise from 4 million euros to 7 million euros to help uh, outlets when they change hands. We've got to talk about that one later because my libertarian senses are tingling. Uh, <laughs> a recent government study gives a big thumbs up for ebook lending. Good news for tablet sporting library users. U.S. government panel published their recommendations on last Wednesday. Uh, following submissions from across the book trade, finding that digital books should be loaned free of charge in libraries and that despite concerns from authors and publishers, 
Members should be able to borrow books remotely. I like it. So uh, Penguin Publisher is speeding up ebook access for libraries. Uh, starting this past Tuesday, libraries can offer ebooks from Penguin Group at the same time that the hardcover comes out. Uh, a switch from previous policy delaying downloads for six months. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, technology marches forward. A book trailer for The Dark by Lemony Snicket is out now. Lemony Snicket, author of a series of unfortunate events, has written a picture book. And not only that, he's got John Klassen, who drew This Is Not My Hat, to illustrate it, and Neil Gaiman to read it. How cool is that? You can check out that trailer at bookguys.ca slash blog slash the dark. And, uh, Sir Jimmy, we're going to move on to a segment we like to call... Books on Film and Television. I always got to sneak in some Doctor Who every week. So <laughs> a new Doctor <laughs> Who book is coming, and this one is written by his fictional former companion, Amy Pond. The book is called Summer Falls, and it was featured in the last episode of Doctor Who, The Bells of St. John. And it's coming soon. The author is listed as Amelia Williams, which, of course, would more than likely be Amelia Pond's name once she took the last name of her husband, Rory Williams, the man who dies over and over and over again. <laughs> and uh, HBO saying that uh, the gigantic piracy numbers for the, the Game of Thrones debut this year is actually a compliment. So, uh, that's kind of crazy. They're saying the show's second season was recently uh, released to record-setting DVD sales for the network, but in December, Game of Thrones also ranked as the most illegally downloaded TV series of last year. Um, HBO program president Lombardo said, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but it's a compliment of sorts. Uh, the, the demand is there, and it certainly didn't negatively impact DVD sales. Um, piracy is something that comes along with having a wildly successful show on a subscription network. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to jump in here because I, I read this article earlier in the week. And one of the points he brought up is that he wasn't terribly pissy because they have the pirates beat in quality. I don't know if the last time this guy went to a torrent site was when they were putting out like 240p DivX files or something. But, you know, 10 minutes yeah. after the Game of Thrones is over, you can get a 1080p version of it anywhere, basically. So yeah, I, I thought that was a little weak uh, argument on his part. And we're going to move on to do some quick comic books, comic books, comic books. Comixology is upgrading more titles to their HD format. Comixology has heard your pleas, ladies and gentlemen, for the comics you want to see in their glorious CMX HD reading standard, which is standard on the iPad 3 and larger tablets. And they're looking to add many more in the near future to the already 7,000 titles they have already upgraded. Now, gentlemen, before we come back and talk to our good friend here, Bill Meeks, and tell you all about one of our sponsors, which is, it's that time, Sir Jimmy. We're talking about Squarespace. Folks, go to bookguys.ca slash Squarespace. You can check them out for free. It's how we host our websites, how I host my personal business site. It's how I host bookguys.ca. It is really easy. If you know how to use Microsoft Word, believe me, you know how to move things around and make your own website in Squarespace. Check it out for free. You don't even need a credit card. You just got to, you know, plug in a name. It could be a fake name. Check it out. Bookguys.ca slash Squarespace. We were back right after these messages, and we'll talk to Bill Meeks from Meeks Mixed Media. Hey, Paul. This is Orson Scott Card. I thought I was the book guy. Now I find out you're the book guy. What am I? Oh, I guess I'm just the author of Ender's Game. Okay. Book guys. Hey, we're back, and we're talking with Bill Meeks from Meeks Mix Media. How you doing, buddy? I am doing excellent. Excellent. I, 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 I like the new format of the show. It's like real quick, one, two, three, punch through the news stories. It's, it's a good time. We get through it. Now we can lay back, relax, and talk about any which one we want. And yeah, I want to touch, touch on a little bit about what you were talking about, the HBO thing. I think he's right. I mean, I think you're right. Uh, 720p quality usually is standard now on torrents. Yeah. Quarantine is kind of one of the reasons I really enjoy my new Nexus 7 because <laughs> Apple doesn't allow you to do those kind of things. Um, no. I do have oh, an HBO account. Hey, I can say it. Hey, I got an <laughs> HBO account. I, I'm legally entitled to watch Game of Thrones. Uh, I pay for my cable service at home. I pay for HBO. I just sometimes can't watch it when it's on. And DVR, I want to watch it on mm. here whenever I want. 
they're taking it the right way. Like, it's a compliment. Your show is huge, and those numbers should count, I think, for, uh, you know, sales. The, the only problem is uh, when, you, when you get a torrent, it, usually the guy who's put it up is taking away all the commercial. So yeah. that's kind of why they can't count it as, you know, a uh, viewer. Well, with, H, with HBO, does that even matter? Because HBO doesn't have commercials, do they? That's, that's a good point. That is a good, really good point. You know, that's one of the exceptions. Networks that don't, you know, play commercials... Does it matter mm -hmm. that you're torrenting it, even though you already paid for it at home? Ah, these guys get to get their heads, to, you know, together on this and just look. I've got HBO. Give me an app. I can watch it anywhere, and I don't have to pay extra mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, like if pay ten dollars to watch it on your iPad, pay another ten dollars to watch it on your TV. They, I, I actually like the uh, BBC iPlayer model, uh, which uh, they had. They have it. You know, you can go to the site and stream. It's you know basically like Hulu, and then there's also a player you can get on on your on your device or on your computer, and you can actually just download it so you have it to watch whenever, which is pretty cool. And you know that counts as a viewer or whatever for their numbers. I like this uh, this penguin thing. Uh, speaking of uh, you know devouring content on your tablet, <laughs> I like the fact that they're now uh, day of release. Books are going to be available, or not day of release, but closer. Then the six months they've been making people wait to read some mm -hmm. library, and usually they limit copies. Even though it's a digital ebook, there'll only be like five copies of the new Stephen King book at the you know, Toronto Library. And you got to just sit there and click on their website until you know, get on a waiting list. Sometimes it takes like four weeks to be able to download it, which mm -hmm. an ebook doesn't really make sense. But I guess it kind of does. They have to make it a little bit more annoying to get it free from the library than you know. Paying the eight dollars, nine dollars, and downloading it. Yeah, they they have to uh, put back the the uh, scarcity that got taken away when it went digital, <laughs> more or less. Like I I've never uh, I've never done like a, a an ebook uh, checkout from a library or anything. Do you have to get like an app from the library, or is there like a universal app that you know works through a system or something? Uh, it it there's all kinds of different ways it works. Uh, it usually is a separate app. That will give you that book. You can read it, and then it takes it away from you when your time's up. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it is here in North Carolina. My wife went to the library, and, and she she had a, a stint where she was doing that quite regularly. And uh, then she got the Amazon Kindle app, and you know she just doesn't want to wait. She wants she's going. You're going to the beach tomorrow. You want a book to read. You know mm -hmm. you you want something now. So if it's just something that that you want to read, but you don't have to read it now. You know, jump in the queue, I guess, wouldn't be so bad. But, you know, that immediacy, you know, it's still there. So, you know, that's how the booksellers are still going to, you know, make some money. You know, on one hand, I, I, I really want everything open and accessible as possible. On the other hand, I want to see my kids have to suffer when there isn't a book in. <laughs> you know, so yeah. half of one, half dozen of the other. Now, they usually have a pretty robust waiting list system, like the Toronto Library. Uh, so it, it really isn't that annoying. You can get on the waiting list for that really super popular book. And there's usually a lot of stuff that is available. A lot of people don't take advantage of it. It is a great way to, uh, you know, to get some ebooks onto your device. Actually, I should load that app on my Android if it's available for Android or on the iPad. And I should bring that to the table one of these weeks and uh, go through the, the Toronto one anyways. I know it's different mm -hmm. everywhere. Every city's got a different library system and app. And yeah. Yeah, let's take a look here, guys. Piracy, Game of Thrones, going crazy. Everyone's pirating all these TV shows. You know, they call it pirating, but the fact is most of the people that are, are pirating these things have a right to watch them already. It's just mm -hmm. we want the convenience of having things, being able to experience this media. Uh, I want to experience Games of Thrones, Game of Thrones when, I, when I want to. You know, uh, On my device, I want to watch the, the TV show on here. Let me do it. If I want to watch, you know, if I want to read an ebook, ebooks, you know, have pretty been forward thinking. I mean, almost right out of the gate, we had access to ebooks on every device, uh, mostly thanks to Amazon, as they really mm -hmm. did. They came out with, you know, a PC player, you know, a Mac player, a, you know, they came out with an iPad app, an Android app, uh, pretty much everything. So mm -hmm. we kind of want that for television content as well, which isn't happening. 
Yeah, it, 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 one of my big things too is you know six years down the road, if I want to go watch an episode of Game of Thrones in, in the service that I bought it from has died, and the DRM servers aren't, aren't online anymore, I, I still want to be able to have access to it. You know, like we, we when I was a kid, <laughs> you bought something and you kept it forever. Now yeah. it's it's you buy a license, <laughs> and yeah. uh, everybody only. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was I was gonna go way off because you know they're trying to maintain control of everything. You know, you uh, we had uh, here just a couple weeks ago. We played a little piece of what was it, the Iron Man trailer uh, that we threw in the show, and then we talked about last week. There's you know if you put a little piece of the Iron Man trailer into the Book Guy show, which is our podcast, which is only you know two three hundred thousand viewers. That's you it. got um, the She-Hulk now. Uh, yeah, the she- She-Hulk has now been turned into um, an adult film and you know, taking that likeness and, and totally distorting that, that. And those people are making money off of it. It's, it's crazy the way things are backwards. So I'm, I, the Padre's not here, so I can say things like, maybe next time I show an Iron Man uh, 3 trailer, I got to put something in, uh, something in Robert Downey's mouth and then it'll be fine. <laughs> just saying, just saying, porno's okay, but you can't show the trailer and promote the movie. Uh. Well, see, see, Iron Man's the perfect way because I mean, you don't even have to change the name to make it a porn title. Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just made you spill your drink everywhere, yeah. Paul. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> you just you just put iron in quotes. <laughs> yeah, my uh, I'm gonna call this now my spit guard. It's do it, right, doing yeah. its job. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, new Doctor Who book. That's kind of interesting. So uh, we've seen this before, guys, in the, uh, what was it? Oh, Castle. Castle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the TV show Castle, of course, based on a fictional writer. They've, they've got a ghost writer to do, uh, you know, Nathan Fillion's character, you know, doesn't exist, right? But he's writing books and they've released those in, in you know, concurrent with the TV series. Now, it seems like Doctor Who is doing a lot of this now. They've, uh, from last season, there was a book by uh, Melody Pond. Uh, of course, the River Song, the Doctor's wife, and uh, now the, they've come out with this one, uh, written by her mother, the Doctor's mother-in-law. Of course, also a <laughs> fictional character, and the book was actually featured just like last uh, season in the episode. It's kind of meta. It's kind of cool. I mean, and and whoever these ghostwriters are, they're pretty good because they do write it from the perspective of the characters. Kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Did, did uh, either of you check out the one they released for uh, Angels Take Manhattan? Uh, yes. they, the one that was re- hey, How was it? Did it d- give any more plot details or anything? Or? Uh, no, it's actually a fictional story. Yeah, because it so was part not, of the narration of the episode, right? right? But, but yes, but it, it's part of the narrative, but it's, it's, it's a totally different. It goes off on a tangent. Uh, read, uh, mm-hmm. Watching the episode doesn't spoil the whole book. Uh, I actually experienced it on Audible. Uh, it because just because Alex Kingston does read it herself, and it oh, is oh, that's cool. Yeah, that that's what you know that did it for me. So it was like nine bucks or something. I picked it up right away. Uh, it's a short mm-hmm. one. It's like two hours, I think, under oh, two hours, cool. anyways. Audiobook and yeah, worth it if you're a fan. I I actually had uh, someone ghost read that. So <laughs> <laughs> as long as they didn't blink, they'd be all right. Yeah, they're actually doing that with a lot of TV shows. That now that seems to be a new the ebook thing seems to be a revenue model because I I do a podcast about uh, the show Once Upon a Time on ABC, and they're not only doing a novel uh, a novelization of the first episode with a bunch of like background stuff, uh, new additional information, but they're also putting out a oh sorry that was my pad. Hey, I, what I what is the name of that podcast? I gotta know because my wife loves oh, that show. It's a uh, Greetings from Storybrooke. Uh, it, it's um, all about Once Upon a Time. Uh, but they're also doing a, since it's on ABC and Disney owns Marvel and ABC, they're going to be doing a graphic novel too, which I thought was kind of cool, telling the backstory of one of, like a minor, minor character. So yeah, way, I really know, like Bill, that universe building. This, this you is know? why I'm a big proponent of Disney just buying everything. I, I bow <laughs> down. They're doing a great job with Marvel. We bow down to our masters of Disney because it'd be great to have, like, being able to play Iron Man 3 trailers on Book Guys show if Disney bought us. You know, and it seems <laughs> like they're buying so many properties that 
we're almost at the point uh, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, I believe, with uh, with Brian Brushwood. That we're almost mm-hmm. to the point where you could film Ready Player One. You know, you could have you know uh, Japanese Spider Man robots fighting alongside jet fighters and the Death Star and Voltron. Because <laughs> Disney's gonna own them all. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they'll like be able, I, we'll be able to play all those trailers on the Book Guys show because uh, Disney's going to buy us as well. Why I, not? Is, is that an announcement then? No, no. Oh. Not official. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Just a rumor. Just a rumor. <laughs> it was in Variety this morning. I think we do well, have Disney, a mouse here in the, in the studio somewhere, but it's not Mickey. <laughs> Just putting that out there. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going to remind everybody about Audible.com, one of our sponsors. One of our best sponsors. They're great to us. I love them. I've had an account for over three years. Uh, no, it's been more. Four or five years. Go to bookguys.ca slash audible. You get any of the books we're talking about right now. They've got, I think right now they've got over 130,000 titles. They keep screwing up my ad read because every week I go and check. They got more books. They're up to 130,000. <laughs> they're, they're putting a great effort forth to... Uh, Get as many audio uh, books converted to audio as possible. They've got this great uh, the A list series now. Uh, I know Gabriel DeCure is part of that, and uh, you know they're getting some real A list stars to do books. Uh, they're getting a lot of classics, properly recorded, so it's not you know. Welcome to books on tape. You ever heard some of those old ones from like uh, you know the what do you call it the ah uh, the Gutenberg project where they got like, all these amateurs to read the books and some of them you can hear oh, like yeah. you can hear the it's guy's mom volunteers. calling him to dinner in the background so they're recording a lot of those doing a great job go to audibletrial.com slash book eyes and get any book we're talking about tonight uh, for free right for a month they do want your credit card though you can cancel so I, I, I could get that Doctor Who book we were talking about that I, I'm yeah. very interested in now since you were telling me about it yeah Read by Alex yeah. Kingston, the star of Doctor Who. Excellent. Excellent. I think you may, I think you may have made a sale there, there Paul. What I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, we're going to do a quick update and remind everybody about... Welcome to Prize of Ganza. This is when Sir Jimmy just leaves. He's like, true Prize of Ganza. I already <laughs> threw a free hollow book in the box. I don't even know where the box is. I promised last week we would put an um, electronic device into the Prize Aganza box. That's going to happen next week. Uh, it didn't arrive on time, but we are going to put one in the box for the Prize Aganza. Still waiting for more videos. I got a couple of them. We just, uh, I've got to uh, actually load them into the computer. We're going to play some of our new entries next week. Uh, I think Kevin the King Lawler has got some competition. Here are the contest rules. You put together... Or just whip out your iPhone. Not put together. It's not a big, you know, production. Whip out your iPhone. Record a 60-second or less video reviewing your favorite podcast, book, audiobook, movie, whatever. Shoot it over to newsroom at me.com or better yet, post it on YouTube and send us a link. And the most creative video, it doesn't have to be a great review or, you know, you don't have to be super awesome. Just creative. Wear a funny hat. Just wear a funny hat. That always helps. And we're adding a lot more stuff next week. And that is Prize of Ganza. Welcome to you know. Prize of Ganza. <laughs> Prize of Ganza. <laughs> we are, we are going to take uh, one of these fine free hollow books back here, and that is going to be in the prize box. So, And you know what? The electronic device that I'm putting in next week might fit in the free hollow book. Okay, I, I just want to say, you know... It sounds awesome, and uh, if you happen to receive a, a video with animated versions of you guys as superheroes from Philly Bleaks, totally not me. Totally not me, because I'm sure I'm probably disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, we'll talk about that. Uh, for folks who don't know, Bill is the gentleman who made all the great, uh, the great uh, video intro with us you know, superheroes and all that. And we hope to be working. Yeah, with Bill. he's the, he's the guy that the made, he's the guy that made me into Aquaman. So thanks for that one. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, one of the top uh, comic books out of the new Fifty Two, Aquaman. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> still, still uh, to be fair, to be balanced, one of one of the most looked down upon characters. But he's 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 on an upswing. He's on an upswing right now. 
lot of you became Aquaman at just the right time. Yeah, and he's a superhero. And people think, oh, he talks to fishes. That's not what all oh, well, you know Aquaman's about. I mean, he could probably go toe to toe with Superman strength wise. You know, people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Unless he's a, but, unless he he's not around water for about an hour and then he 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 just drops gets yeah. dehydrated. But he has recently uh, hey, he can always like blow the top off of a fire hydrant and you know knock <laughs> somebody I, over. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He he's recently discovered Evian water, so he'll be okay. Mm. Hey guys, yeah, he can take a whole Evian truck and lift it up into the sky <laughs> and <laughs> crash it chug down it. on the hole. Just chug it. Nice. <laughs> hey guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about. I heard, Bill, you broke your iPad. <laughs> I did. I did. Here, actually, I have it right here. If I can show it to the camera here. It, this, this was a combination of two different drops over the... I don't know if it's going to focus or not. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's all cracked. It was cutting my fingers. There was broken glass flying around the house, which my wife didn't like. <laughs> so uh, so uh, she made me pick up a new one, and I got... And Paul, I, uh, you're my brother in this now, I guess. I, I picked up a Nexus 7. I was holding it upside down, but you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> we got Sir Jimmy surrounded now. <laughs> yes, I know. I've, I've got to get on it. Uh, you know, Paul already had me wanting to get uh, a mini iPad, and now mm-hmm. this Nexus 7 thing sounds like it's got some really cool underground stuff going on with it. I like that idea. I'm tired of being locked in this ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely more affordable too. I mean, this one was this doesn't have like, you know, mobile data or anything, but it was a buck or a hundred ninety nine. I would usually say a buck ninety nine, but you might think I actually meant a dollar ninety nine, which (laughs) not that cheap. But uh, yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, it's smaller than an iPad, but yeah, it has a really nice screen, like very crystal clear. I was uh, reading some comic books on it last night. I'm gonna I'm gonna use mention smaller. I'm going to just pull my iPad out of this thing here. Just to show folks, this is an iPad mini beside the Nexus 7. So that's what you're looking at. Hopefully I won't trigger, I won't accidentally trigger a jingle while I'm doing this, but this, so, uh, if the weight got is the about Nexus the same. 7, Sorry. What, what's the data plan? Oh. I, I don't have a data plan on my Yeah, mind. neither do I. I got the, the same model that uh, the Bill has. I use my iPhone to tether to it when I have to. Mm-hmm. So I just activate the tethering on my phone and share that with this. There's no SIM card slot for a data plan. There's no SD card slot for expandable RAM. Yeah, that kind of surprised me because I, 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 I think this might be the first Android device I've ever seen that didn't have an SD card slot. Although on the local storage, there is an SD card folder still. Yeah, well, for, for book lovers, uh, I'll tell you that uh, the Amazon app, is, uh, obviously the Amazon app is available. The, uh, you know, the Audible app, is actually better on the Nexus 7 on the Android platform than it is on the iPad and the I- iOS. Uh, mm-hmm. It's all there. Everything you want, uh, most of the things you enjoy, the free apps especially, are made for uh, Android. Got my Firefox on there, my Chrome browser, sorted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, like I was saying, you know, I was reading a comic on it last night, and I figured. You know, it'll be okay for reading a comic, but I'll probably have to do a lot of zooming into panels and this and that and panning around. But no, I just left it. I left it full screen, and I could read it perfectly from about right here. You know, so I uh, very very nice. Say in like crystal clear clear display, and it's a lot lighter than the iPad, which is nice because you know after you hold the iPad for a while, you kind of get like a pain here yeah. or something. You know, from trying to hold it steady. And I, actually, one of the times I dropped that was because it got a little too heavy and it slipped out of my hand. So uh, hopefully that won't happen yeah, with this I, one. I mean, that was one of the first apps I downloaded, of course, Comixology. We're going to have uh, mm-hmm. some people from Comixology on soon. But uh, mm-hmm. this great for reading. The only thing I haven't found, like something like the smart cover for the iPad, because I also mm-hmm. like to consume videos on this a lot. So right now I'm kind of stuck. I have this really clunky uh, keyboardy case thing. I'm trying to find something like a smart cover that I'll just fold over and hold it up. Mm-hmm. Well, if you need one, uh, here all you have to do is take your uh, wooden block and four <laughs> golf tees, and then you sit your iPad down inside of it, and boom, you've got uh, a smart stand. <laughs> and I've I actually... drove a couple extra holes in it, so the, uh, the extra holes that are a little bit closer. That's, that turns it into uh, an iPhone stand, so... It's working great for me for oh about two years now. 
Total Genius. investment, zero. Genius. <laughs> Love it. Is that licensed by uh, that one of those uh, black oh, yeah. market products? <laughs> well, the, uh, the, it's patent pending. Oh, okay. Made in America. America, <laughs> by America. So, uh, you, uh, Bill, you've done with something that I haven't. Like, I've left the stock Android software. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sticking mostly to the Google Play Store. So, uh, I'm kind of getting a similar experience to as I would on iOS, where, you know, I'm going to the store. I'm not really messing with it. But you've mm -hmm. done something that maybe our non advanced tech listeners and, and viewers might want to stay away from. But if you're into it, uh, you're rooting yours. Yes, I uh, rooted mine last night, which uh, on an iOS device uh, is called jailbreaking. But basically, it, it gives you root access. If you've ever used a Linux system or something, you know what that is. It basically makes you, you know, the god of the operating system. You can do whatever you want. And, you know, I, the funny thing is, is I don't use a lot of the features that it gives you necessarily. I just like to have it in case I ever need it. Right. You, you know what I mean? And I know you have to have it rooted. I, one of the things I, and uh, the reason I like the form factor is I'm going to be picking up a Canon 60D uh, DSLR to do video with here okay. in a month or so. And you can actually use this as your monitor. That's cool. You know, it's, instead of having to look through the viewfinder, but you need root to do it which uh, was one of the reasons I wanted to get, get it done right away. It is a pretty simple process. I used a program called uh, the Nexus Root Toolkit, and it, it's really easy. There's like six buttons in the main display. Anytime you click a button, it gives you all the steps one by one on how to do it. It took me until 3 o'clock in the morning, though, <laughs> because I had forgotten that we had Android phones a few months back, and we had the Samsung USB drivers, and it just screwed it all up. So <laughs> then I had to go back and fix it and do it again. So, you know, it, it, it's pretty easy, but if, if you're scared of all of screwing it up, you're probably fine just leaving it be. So this is the, unless you're an advanced user, you, you probably don't need to root your... Mm -hmm. Android tablet, anyways, and I gotta say, don't be afraid to, you know, judge which one you want. I would still say Grandma gets the iPad each and every mm -hmm. single time. Uh, big buttons, stuff is already stock on there. Uh, most, I would say, I'm gonna guess that 75 percent of most computer users would be happy with already what already comes on the iPad. You know, the mm -hmm. odd person might add an Audible account or you know whatever, but it comes stock. Definitely mom and grandma, get her my iPad. Get him an iPad. Android, don't be afraid. You know, if, you're, if you know anything about computers, if you use computers, uh, don't be afraid. It, the experience is much different than it was two or three years ago. It's really easy to, to check out. And it doesn't mean you have to hate Apple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can it, still have your iMac and your iPad and iPhones and iWhatevers. Yeah, options are always good, yeah, because I have, you know, I have my iPhone 5 right here, got the Nexus 7 right next to it, got a Windows computer, I have a Mac out there, you know? It, it, it's a big world. Why limit yourself, you know? It's all good. Always. <laughs> I, one, one thing, uh, just one quick thing, I, I, th I think you kind of implied it that you can't uh, install apps that aren't in the Google Play Store, the Amazon Store, or whatever, uh, without rooting it. You definitely can. There's... Usually, oh, yes. there's somewhere in the options uh, where you can uh, choose to uh, install programs from external surf or sources. Again, uh, buyer beware. Your mileage may vary. It's generally right. pretty safe. Uh, but, you know, sometimes people might try and pass off mal malware as a pirated version of right. Zombies Run or something. So, yeah. you know, just be careful yeah. out there. Uh, one of the things I would say, if you do something you don't have to do, if you're reading your books on an iPad or <laughs> iPhone, first thing I installed, first thing I did, I went to the Google Play Store and I installed AVG Antivirus, which is free. And it'll usually alert you as to which apps are annoying. And even if it says, this app is annoying, it's going to like annoy the crap out of you. Or it's mm. a virus. Or it's going to try to steal your credit card and buy stuff in Russia with it. So yeah, I would recommend yeah. highly getting antivirus on the Android not necessary at all, and not available on iPad. Mm. That's a. Uh, I I am totally not downloading that right now. I I have that downloaded already, Paul. I swear. <laughs> there you go. Get it. <laughs> AVG antivirus. It's free. Uh, yeah, it is kind of. It does even like a, like I said. It does warn you. 
hey, this app is free, but it annoys you. It'll, mm-hmm. you know, put up messages or, you know, interfere with your, what you're doing on the thing. And you don't want to be reading a book and then all of a sudden some ad mm-hmm. pops up. <laughs> hey, guys, quick question now. As I said, my libertarian sense was tingling. Why is France bailing out physical bookstores? I mean, I love physical bookstores. They're awesome. But I'm a big proponent of, if you can't keep your business afloat, why should I? Am I off here? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 guess, I guess the French like their books. I, like, unfortunately, you hit me in my one-week spot. I, I'm generally good on international politics, except for France. Like, if this was about Zimbabwe... <laughs> I, I'd have so much commentary, so much knowledgeable, thought-out commentary. But France, I'm just a blank. Well, it's like, it's like the bailing out of the banks. I mean, mm. yeah, I'm no, I'm, no, I'm not French, but I'm, I'm hoping this doesn't get to the point here in Canada, the United States, North America, that, oh, man, the Joey's physical bookstore is failing. Oh, we, let's give him a million dollars. Well, guess what? I'm going to start then. My business, I'm going to start a bookstore or a bank. <laughs> this is great. I can do whatever yeah. I want. I can steal from the till. And then at the end of the month, I can just say, hey, government, where's my money? Hey, just tell them, hey, I'm French Canadian. So, hey, <laughs> you're part of Francais, huh? Uh, so, Bill Meeks, you are, uh, what's on? Let's talk about it. What's on our, hang on, there's a button. What's on your tablet? What's on your Nightstand. What are you reading? What are you reading, Bill? What's you? What's going on? Uh, right now, and darn it, I, I meant to bring it down here with me. It's upstairs, right next to my bed. I'm reading uh, a novelization in preparation for the big 50th anniversary of Doctor Who this year. I'm reading a novelization of the Five Doctors, uh, which w- was one of the one of the multi Doctor specials, and it it yeah, it has one through five. I I was going to sit here and name them. No, it has Doctors 1 through 5 in it. And it's kind of cool. You just, uh, the story starts out with all of the Doctors just kind of disappearing from whatever Ah, action they're doing at the time. And they get transported uh, to sort of a secret area on Gallifrey where Omega has set up his big temple and they have to kind of investigate whether he's still there and what they're doing there. But it's, it's really good. It's uh, by Terrence Dix, uh, who, who did a lot of the Doctor Who novel, classic Who doc, novelizations, which ironically, I've read more of the novelizations of classic episodes than I've actually seen classic episodes. Yeah, like, you're probably better off doing that too because, I mean, the, mm-hmm. the classics was, it's a different time, really slow yeah. paced. Mm-hmm. And See, it's, it's not the pace that gets me so much. It's the quality of the audio. I don't, there was this point when I was like, I, I used to love watching old movies on AMC, like movie, like the old like Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland movies, all that kind of stuff. And then I, I, I don't know, I just hit this point when I was like 13, 14 years old where I just couldn't pay attention because of the audio quality anymore. I don't know what it was. Maybe I just got taste or, you know, I just and got maybe so exposed like- to it's just too much pipe organ in the background. Dun, dun, well, dun. I, I, it, has, it has to do something with the ability to become fully immersed into it. You know, the, mm-hmm. the audio pulls you out. You need the whole, the whole experience. The, the audio is what, you know, brings you in. And uh, the video is, is there. You know, even if it's black and white, that, that doesn't bother me. But, um, you know, I agree. It's, the audio well, is definitely... I, I can key. assure you, Jimmy, that... Yeah. Uh, a Bill reading it or listening to it in audiobook format, his special effects in his head are probably much better than the BBC special <laughs> effects in 1979. Absolutely. And, and if, you're, if you just got into Doctor Who and you only know one Doctor, then you can read an old novelization and imagine the Doctor that you like. Yeah. Oh, the whole plot and every little nuance of it is going to take on a totally different tone from somebody who is thinking of a doctor from 20 years ago. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the only exception I'm going to say, uh, uh, yes, I, I, you're right, Bill, and it's read it. You don't have to go back and watch the old classic episodes, but the third doctor was pretty good, though. I mean, he was doing all, all his own stunts. I mean, he was a former Navy guy. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. at one point they did show his Navy tattoo. I mean, he was riding motorcycles, driving tanks, 
driving the Who Mobile, which I think he bought himself. <laughs> Like, yeah, I think that himself. was just his car <laughs> yeah. that he had, and he wanted to use it on the show. <laughs> I've got this hovercraft. Can I use it, guys? <laughs> he was awesome. And he, you know, he did all his own stunts and fighting and mm. Venusian Aikido and all that stuff. That's a, yeah, l- a little see, bit more fun. It, I, out of the classic Doctors, the one I've watched the most is actually, and I guess this is uh, Matt Smith's favorite, too, was Patrick Troughton. Uh, just uh, the second Doctor. It ju- it's it's just a lot of fun. Like uh, I'm trying to think. There was one like four part serial where he traveled to the land of imagination, where all these you know imaginary characters like there were like n- Nutcrackers from the Nutcracker and you know all sorts and they got lost and they it, it, it was a good time. It was it was a very good time. He was a good Doctor. My my Doctor sure. Who light is going on here in the studio. It's telling <laughs> telling me shut up about the Doctor Who. But I didn't know you were a big fan, Bill. Uh, we're going to have Nick Briggs, the voice of the Daleks, on the show, the Doctor Who, and also the guy who runs Big Finish Audio, does all the oh, uh, audio nice. dramas, uh, I, I think in May. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll have you on the same show. We can all pick out. That would be great. I've been listening to a lot of the Big Finish stuff, too, a lot of the uh, Eighth Doctor stuff. I, which, I, I th- I've made it through the first main uh, season, and they're great. You know, it, it's just like listening to old radio dramas. Yeah. You know, like the old Superman drama or whatever. And they, they do lots of other stuff, too. So check out BigFinish.com, folks. Uh, if you enjoy audio uh, books, you're going to enjoy audio dramas. It's, it's like the old time, the shadow and the green lantern. Uh, that mm. old, I mean, it's each character has their own voice and there's sound effects and music plays. And it's, it's a full production. It's like listening to a TV show that's geared audio only it's fantastic it's usually about an hour two hours depends uh i find i'm gonna say this right now before nick's on the show i find they're a little pricey because mm-hmm. i'm getting accustomed to you know an hour and two hours of entertainment for me should be 99 cents or dollar 99 yeah i'm spoiled you know we're getting spoiled nowadays with all i mean for eight bucks a month i watch the crap out of netflix um mm-hmm. you know i get you know for Ten, fifteen dollars a month, whatever it is, I don't even know. They just take it out of my account. Audible, I get like forty hours a month, you know, for ten dollars. So I, I'm, I'm expecting that. I don't know why. I just think that a, a, you know, two hour long audio drama should be two or three dollars, and they're yeah. usually in the so seven eight dollar range. What, what's on? What's on your nightstand? Oh, I'm actually I'm still going through the passage by Justin Cronin. I'm gonna say Cronin. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy that. It's, it is a 40-hour long audiobook, like I, like I was just saying. Uh, I usually try to get my money's worth of my Audible credit, so I go for the big ones, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's being read by Scott Brick. Uh, he also reads the sequel. That's kind of why I wanted to start with the prequel. It's the zombie masterpiece. Where the hell did I put my Audible? Oh, on my Audible page. Yeah, Justin Cronin, The Passage. About 40 hours long, read by Scott Brick. And I could listen to Scott Brick read the phone book. Seriously, like, all days. <laughs> Bethany. You know, uh, <laughs> great story. Uh, zombie apocalypse slash vampires. The story's changing as we're going through it. So right now it's a survival thing. You've got the last vestiges of humanity are in this small camp. They've got these 100-year-old batteries that are slowly losing their charge, like an old iPad. And the lights <laughs> are eventually going to go out. And when the lights go out, the vampires will basically kill them all. And uh, it's great. I'll, I will talk about it when I'm done. I don't want to spoil the whole thing. It is great. Check it out. Did you say that there were, there were zombies and vampires in the story? It's more of a vamp. I don't really want to kneel it down and say that they're vampires. They're not really vampires. They're not really zombies. <laughs> it's sort of a mix between the two thing going on. We got... Lots of stuff going on at the end. The world is basically ended. We're done. You know, yeah. And I love an end of the world book. Yeah, you want to get me hooked on a book? Start page one. <laughs> the world is ending. Everybody's dead except for this one guy. I'm all and in so on that. Again. See, yeah. I, I was really hoping for a, a hybrid vampire zombie. That was almost undefeatable, I think. Almost I mean, throw, a, point. throw a ninja yeah. there and done. Done. These are That's these the are not sparkly, right not sparkly zombie, uh, not sparkly uh, vampires. No, no, not no. sparkly vampires. Like no. vampires, like Blade fights vampires. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. And that's what I'm listening to on Audible right now. 
Uh, so what else is going on? What's going on, Sir Jimmy? What are you? What's on your nightstand? What's happening? Well, here it was just a few days ago. You mentioned that um, you know somebody had given us a, a book on uh, the Kindle, and I said, "Well, you know, I haven't received the book yet. I haven't got it." And then I fired up my Kindle app, and lo and behold, I had two books I didn't even realize were in there. So I started two books now. I got the Shadow of a Dead Star by Michael Sheen, and uh, the God Particle by Ron Kierkegaard Jr. So. I've started both of them, and now I'm sort of torn as to which one to jump off on. I think I'm just going to uh, go with Shadow of a Dead Star and try to finish. Why not? Hey, you know what's uh, interesting about that, too? You you're, you listen on your phone, Jimmy? Yes, phone, iPad, both of them. I just got a, a new car that's got uh, sync in it. It's a Ford. Ooh, and, man, yeah. when I get in the car, it's like iPad synced. And boom, it, it automatically starts whatever I left off. And if I shut off the car, go get gas, I get back in, turn on the car, boom, it starts playing again. I don't have to go and fumble and find and punch buttons. I, I didn't think I was going to like it, but uh, that's kind of neat. Guys, you know, it's been a lot, a lot of fun talking some books. Uh, next week, we got R.E. McDermott going to be on the show talking about his new book, read by Jeff Gurner. <laughs> Ooh, Jeff Gurner. I just threw that in there. I wish everything was read by Jeff Gurner. Hey, thanks so much, Bill Meeks from Meeks Mixed Media. I'm a regular now. I'm so excited. Officially a regular now. Bill the book guy. Thank you, Sir Jimmy. Hey, can't we'll wait next for next week. week. Stay tuned, book readers and book listeners. Book Guy Show will return next week. Same book time, same book channel.